Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. food fam this is the walk and talk podcast your favorite food podcast and i'm your host carl fiadini we're podcasting on site at ibis images studios where food photography comes alive on the menu today we have a oh my goodness a creek stone farm prime porter house this thing is like massive it's like like a cinder block oh my god oh goodness we're also doing a high plains bison ribeye uh, plus, uh, Mr. Uh, Chef Jefferson whipped up some pretty amazing desserts. Um, you're going to want to hang in there and hear all about them. Uh, thank you, uh, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's production. Our guest today is an incredibly talented friend of mine. His dishes are stunning. Stay tuned for Jason F. Lynn, CEC, and the new executive chef at the Grand Bohemian Hotel in downtown Orlando, uh, Jefferson Schlissel, Jefferson, the starship, Schlissel. Jump into some pre-shift, explain uh, what's on the on the menu today. What's up? My Not bro. much, man. That, that porterhouse is... It's like a brick. 32 ounces. I felt like it was the John Candy episode of uh, the 96er. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. it for, I, you know, listen. So... Normally, normally we cook all the food, then jump into the cast. We have some time constraints today. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't jump into that ribeye yet, but I got to tell you, you know, what we've had so far on that porterhouse, stupid. Thank stupid you. Stupid good, man. Thank you. You know, if this, pod, if this number one <laughs> podcasting doesn't work out, you should go back to the kitchen. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we did, I wanted to do, it, every function that we do, we want to do it two ways. So we did the porterhouse. And the porterhouse, just so everyone knows, the difference between a porterhouse and a T-bone is just minute. It's maybe some of the cut and how much of the – so you get the two of the best both worlds. You get a New York strip on one side. You get a filet on the other or beef tenderloin on the other. Porterhouse is just a lot more of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So porterhouse is like something – like somebody like me, a fat fatty would go and order <laughs> because I'm, just, I'm going to eat everything. Well, I told you there's a place down in Alton Road, uh, Villa Meina. Uh, it's off of right near the yard bird actually. Mm-hmm. And he's from Bologna, Italy. Uh, when, when Bourdain was still alive, he got rated the best pasta Bourdain has ever made uh, in the world, in the really? world that he's eaten. Yeah. And he would have a hundred dollar porterhouse on his menu and he would sell about a case a week. And then one guy would come in there it was like 96 ounces. Mm. And this one guy once a week would come in there and that's all he'd eat. But he wouldn't eat for the rest of the week. Uh, well, he was, he's, no, like a, he's not like you. He, he was like a rent. He was like a reptile, right? Like you, you have one big right, meal like a, and a, a month can, later, an anaconda, and I don't need to eat for a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, that's um, all right. So, but jump into what you made today. It looks, looks really, yeah. Great. Well, he does. John does, and as I pointed to my left, John does a great, phenomenal job taking. He's okay. This art. He's all right. No, yeah. John's awesome. But uh, so we, we did this smoked on his Daniel Boone. And so it's got that hint of smoke. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. What? Daniel Boone. Yeah, Daniel Boone. Yeah, Green okay. Mountain uh, mm-hmm. smoker. Yeah. So we brought ah, it up to yeah. 415, 450 degrees. We seared it bone side first, and then we did flipping it, and then we had some spices on there. And then I took a cherry jam. We kind of torched that to line that up. And then I wanted to treat it like you're going to a really nice steakhouse. So we did diced vegetables, but it's getting a little cooler. Yeah. Like the last couple of days here in, in Sefner and Bartow and, and fish hawk. It was like 52 degrees in the morning. So it's like root vegetables, parsnips, carrots, uh, rutabaga, par- and uh, turnips. So I kind of roasted all those together. Little grilled smoked asparagus on the side plates, seared mushrooms. Then we presented that 
we then did a, I paid homage to Simis, which growing up as a Jewish kid, hated Simis. Is that the USS? Yeah, <laughs> right. No? Okay. Yeah, minutes. No? <laughs> so this is a very over the top sweet on top of sweet. It was carrots and sweet potatoes and prunes. And it was like, you know, growing up at a seven, six year old kid looking at that stuff going mm. prunes. I'm kind of regular. This did not look. No. This didn't look like, you know, your mama's or your grandmama's sort of, uh, no. yeah, no, traditional sort of food. And this was one up too, because we did the sourdough. So I've been looking for a really good sourdough and I said, screw this. I got it. Can't wait for Amy. Yeah, can we get away for Amy? Huh? <laughs> we so, have her on a schedule too, yeah, by the way. I saw that. Yeah, she's coming up. So, um, I did the sourdough, did it and grew it for six days. Um, did the sourdough, cook this thing as a tartine open faced with Stokes purple, sweet potato had a little vanilla to that. The sweet potato that I was using was orange that had some chipotle and some warming spices. The carrot, I just roasted with some steak seasoning and then took that porterhouse, sliced that down and put it on top with some chives and the smoked prunes next level. They were really good. I will tell you this, the, um, the carrot puree, I mean, sweet potato puree what? or the carrot puree, which one? Both today, but today that was carrot. I mean, sorry, that was carrot roasted and sweet potato puree. The orange one <laughs> in the puree form, uh, it looked like sweet potato, yeah, like you can make a pie out of that. Oh, 100%, yeah. like a moose, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely 100%. Right, um, <clears throat> but this is like paying homage well, to my heritage. Oh, 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 oh. A lot of people are mad at you, <laughs> they're mad at you. We promised, we yeah, promised, chimichurri. No. Yeah, the recipes. What do you? No. What? Come in, come in. Get out of here. No, what I'm saying is last week or the week before, whenever, recently, we said there would be recipes and there hasn't been any recipes and people are pissed. Okay? You're the only one. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm telling you that there's a, there's a, uh, a wave of people who are tsunami like. Tsunami or. A tsuna- uh, yeah, if you will, uh, who are, they're looking for more and, and we're not giving it to them. And you know what, man? I'm putting um, that is resting squarely <laughs> on your shoulders. Not no, there's not just my shoulders. There's to my left shoulders. Oh, he has to post it. Oh, look at this! Look at this! You see what he does? <laughs> no, he this does? is John this is, is like called... John is like E two Brutai. Like wow, look at this! Look at this! Ready for this one? Wow! If we had better organization from somebody, it would tell us. Whoa! What to... Oh my! You goodness. dropped it in our lap. <laughs> Wait a minute! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> look at the smirk on to your your right there. <laughs> Yeah, John's like, uh, screw both of you guys. <laughs> screw you guys. I'm going home. You know, he's he's like, well, I am home. <laughs> he's like, All right, forget it. Uh, all right, so I do want to bring, I do want to get these recipe things going. We'll definitely get that. John, is that going to be on the uh, on the blog? What is that? Hmm? As soon as he gets it, he said. Yeah, but is that going to be a blog thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have to do another blog and our, then, our producer has a perfectly working microphone but he just he <laughs> decides that he just wants to shake his head yes no whatever you know, whatever he doesn't like to talk oh he's an introvert he is it's true it's a true story i know a guy 35 years he's definitely uh accurate he just okay. started talking recently to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of funny uh, all right. All it's right, like right. Silent Bob <laughs> talking about Jay Gardner from last week. We have our own version of him. <laughs> Silent John. <laughs> is that his new name? I think that's the new name. Silent John. He's going to kill you in a second. He is, but that's what it is. <laughs> Wait, hey, listen, when you, when you, when you get into like one of these podcasts or, you know, some sort of a thing like this, some content that you're on every week or whatever, you have to have these these little tag names or these little pet names, like amongst the group or whatever. Like Jefferson? Like Jefferson. Yeah, like Jefferson. Exactly. Yep, Starship. Yeah. I mean, listen, but when um, but when we're putting stuff in descriptions or we're putting content out, it's always Chef Jeffrey Schlissel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But on the show, it's Jefferson. Starship, uh, you know, whatever. I, I feel what you're dishing. I know. I know you are. You're smelling what I'm uh, stepping in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. So uh, without further ado... Let's, uh, <laughs> right. Let's, uh, let's get the chef, Jason F. Lynn, CEC, and the new executive chef. Do you know what CEC means? Of the Grand Bohemian <laughs> Hotel he in Orlando. He doesn't know. I, I'm doing an intro here. <laughs> <laughs> Certified executive. Anyway. Oh, yeah. he does know. CEC. It, 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 the, 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 the people can't see this. <laughs> You're number one? Uh, yes, you are. We're all number one, but you more. 
Okay. Uh, welcome Thank you. to the pro- We've been talking about doing some stuff together for two years. Yeah, at least. Right? Yep, definitely. Had, had to be. Yep. Yeah. And finally, oh, and by the way, let me just back up a bit. Not only is Chef Jason here today for the podcast and obviously, and congratulations on the, on the, on the, on the spot over there, man. That's a beautiful hotel. Yep, definitely. And, and you can talk about some of the renovations in a minute, but, yep. um, Chef Jason is in fact, uh, our newest member of our restaurant recipes, culinary, uh, you know, partner team. Watch out. Yep. This guy's food is amazing. I'm, I'm talking coming. about like, there's, it's, it's beautiful. It pops. And it's tasty. So um, coming soon, Thank you. Restaurant Recipes um, with Chef Jason F. Lynn. All right. Um, quick, real fast. Yeah. Background. Go. Background. Uh, born too, up too north. Slow, too slow. Came to no, South kidding. Florida. <laughs> Just kidding. Came to South Florida. So, uh, fell into a dish pit at a beautiful Jewish delicatessen. They taught me everything. Foundational soup, stock sauces. And then boom, boom, boom. Came into, uh, you know, line cook. Uh Prep cook, line cook, sous chef. You know, you get those couple KM jobs in an area where they're kind of taking advantage of you. And then eventually you start becoming an executive chef. and They and, take uh, advantage of them more. They, they take advantage. Yeah, well, sometimes. But, but uh, you know, education, Florida Culinary Institute down in West Palm back in the day. And then, yes, I went after CEC with the ACF just to really uh, prove it to myself. Uh, I remember seeing a lot of gentlemen come in to take that test at culinary school and was like, I'll never be that good. But anywho, I said, forget that. And I went after that. And uh, yeah, and even currently with the uh, certified master chef, you know, assessment I went for. So I have dreams of grandeur or something wrong with me. Or you're into sadism, masochism. We, well, that's the behind the scenes part. <laughs> We're not supposed well, to talk about that part. Well, yeah, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, the abuse of a KM, the poor KM, he's, you know, like this, you know, crossover position and, uh, you know, well, Pay's just, not just a the CMC yeah, exam. Yeah. Just, I mean, you heard it was an assessment. Yeah, the assessment was in depth. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so I just believe in continuing education, bettering myself, you know, growing towards my future and uh, and all things culinary arts. Yeah. Um, I want to know. Well, first of all, yeah. And, and there was like, well, how many people in your group? Uh, ten of us. Ten. Yep. You ten know, in, ten out. Like everybody like, failed. No, I'm kidding. But you, is, this is going to be. <laughs> yeah, this I mean, is, we we kind of. I think most of us probably felt like we failed. Just you know, uh, how transparency. But it was an assessment of like like a boot, grading. It's almost like a boot camp sort of. Yeah, thing, right? they they whip you, they hit you, they scream at you. No, <laughs> I can, we don't do that anymore. But it was really an assessment of grading anymore. Of our, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what, what they should do of our for, skill set. Like, what, what they really should do, like bring it back to the old schools, like line you up against the wall and throw six pants at you. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I can pass that test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we all can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the older ones. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right. So Lance actually listens to the Lance Cook who was with you up there. He listens oh, yeah. to the podcast. Yeah, so. great guy. Actually, I'll, I'll throw out the Chef Lance. You know, I was kind of intimidated to meet Chef Lance. I kind of looked at him as this kind of this god in culinary arts. And I met him and come to figure he's a man like you and I. And he was actually really cool. We kind of hit it off and became friends. And he's actually coming to Orlando. And we're trying to go out for dinner and hang out. He let me get him on the show. We can. Uh, he's just really busy. Um, but Lance is one of those guys that is so competitive, but he also mm-hmm. has that human heart, yeah. and humanity behind him, and he's just a really yep. I mean, all around a really great guy. Yep. When you see him, he's got it looks very mati- uh, military like. Right? Yep. He's got that staunch look. He's got that you know death stare. But when you <laughs> you see him smile and he gli- you know it just lights up the room and, and just he's just a really phenomenal individual. You don't mess with people. That do the thousand yard stare. You don't mess with them, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's most chefs. Yeah, most chefs. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I got to throw this one out about. So I was a little We're jealous. At the end of the CMC assessment, there was all these like young groupy chef females that came around Lance. They were like flocking him and having him sign this cutting board. So I was, he, they walk away. I'm like, Lance, you've got groupies, man. Like <laughs> no one's call, asking me to sign a cutting board. We, we can call them, we can call them food groupies. Yeah. Okay, food groupies. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, cause back in about what, before COVID, um, Lance was actually looking to do it cause he was competing against one of, um, the members from the American Culinary Federation of Palm Beach, mm-hmm. Joseph Waters, who was my first vice president. They became so close as competitors. They pushed themselves. And I think every time it was either Lance got gold and Joseph got gold. Mm-hmm. And it was like one or the other. Yep. But then they were going to go to do the CMC together. And that's mm-hmm. just huge because that is a really difficult test. Yeah. I don't care who you are, what you are, to get that you know uh, label on your jacket 
it's tremendous. Yeah. Hands down. I handed, and you know, those guys that do it, Gerald Ford, Mm -hmm. Rich Rosendale, Mm -hmm. uh, all those guys that have done it in the past. There's just, it's amazing. And then the newest one, which was Andy Chabella, I think is, Mm -hmm. I don't pronounce his name wrong. uh, Sorry, Andy. Um, That's the CMC, CMPC that Mm -hmm. did it in recently. Those guys, I mean, they're the wealth of knowledge they have is just mind blowing. Definitely. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, I feel like I'm I'm sitting with greatness <laughs> as it is just here. Well, John and and yeah, John, not you. Not like, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, everyone other than you, you Carl. Yeah. <laughs> no, Carl's got greatness. It's around his waist. It's around my waist. My, <laughs> <laughs> I love how I'm the you know. I, yeah, whatever. For a laugh, I'm uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, Grand Bohemian. Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay. So prior to you arriving there, mm-hmm. uh, I have some experiences at that hotel and I love, love, love that property. Um, what have they done though? I, I haven't been there probably in a, maybe a year and a half, two years, maybe. Yeah. So they've gone under a complete renovation. I mean, from the top of the hotel interior wise, everything is basically completely new from the rooms, you know, new furnishings, new Everything. I've been watching them bring in the new TVs, take out the old TVs. It's literally an in and out kind of thing. So I went and visited, uh, Jeff, you weren't there that day, but um, I went and visited uh, the property um, with uh, actually with uh, with Southern Provisions, with Ryan. Mm-hmm. And um, I hadn't been there, like I said, in about two years. They redid the entire uh, bar area, which yep. is, I mean, they really did a great yep. job. The Bozendorfer Lounge. Yeah. Yep, that it, beautiful. Like yep. they took away that um, the uh, horseshoe looking bar, yep. circle bar there. Yeah, the flow is much better now because that mirrored the uh, the ceiling, the tray ceiling above was the same round rotundra like shape. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying, people, is um, get to Orlando, get to the Grand Bohemian. Um, they're still working on some rooms, but like for for the food factor, get there. Uh, they did they redid the main dining room. Yeah, we have our private dining room, which we call the Peacock Room. That room is freaking gorgeous. Yeah, that's and, my and favorite room. I don't know who took that picture the other day that you posted. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, you yeah. did a great... Yeah, didn't... that was... Hey, John, uh, watch, your, watch your six, man. <laughs> uh, watch your back. That was with an Android phone. <coughs> wow. Wow. Well, well, get, out. Now. get out. Get out. No, I'm kidding. It, it was, it's gorgeous. The table looks like it's a mirror. The, everything is just... Wow. Yeah, wow. that's a great shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out there, people. Yeah. My question to you is when they redid the hotel, did they redo the equipment in the kitchens? Yeah. What they did is they made everything smaller and they ordered less equipment. So they took the, yeah. like, I'm kidding. Well, no, it, it, we just CV here. everything now. You know? <laughs> here's the no, problem. Like most, chef. we don't know what to do now. We had to get rid of all the water baths. <laughs> most, most hotels, they don't look at food and beverage the way it needs to be looked at. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it kind of, I know from the private club world, I think kitchens tend to get a little bit more love where the chef can really sell the point of the kitchen when you come into more of a little bit of the corporate business world and hotel world it kind of can tend to be the uh, the end of it but we are part of that renovation and we are continuing to start the renovation on the kitchen and working through that so mazel excited. tov, That's mazel tov yeah, definitely, definitely. That. congratulations yeah, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. i mean look at we were at the don cesar right we're in that one that one kitchen that we're in mm-hmm. and they were saying oh they're going to redo the other ones i'm like what about this and we got that look mm-hmm. that's exactly what i'm talking about yes yeah. it's one of those things that's in the back of the mind well, when you have a property that's a hundred years old or whatever, yeah. you know, you don't have a lot of options either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that building. So the Don is probably one of my favorite hotels in the state. It's just gorgeous. Big, beautiful pink palace that they call it right on the sand. So it's right on the, right on the water. You can't beat it. It's like that, you know, it's that 1920s, mm. you know, or yeah, 1920s uh, yeah. look. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, who was that? <laughs> oh, can I give a couple of props, a couple of shout outs? Sure. No. I, <laughs> yes. I have to give a shout out to, uh, Ben, the new GM. He definitely has, you know, bigger dreams for the property. So we're excited about that. And then my F and B director, Louisa, she's awesome. I'm, I'm lucky to have her on my team and my backbone executive sous chef, definitely chef Frank. He's the man. So I think I met, I might, I may have met Frank you've, before. You've met Frank. Yeah. 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 It's been, like I said, it's been a long time. He's a staple there. Yeah. yeah so, but you know, where did Ben come from? Attention chefs and food buyers. 
Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. Uh, ben was with Kessler, and so he came from another property. So he's been with Kessler for some time. So the parent, the parent company is called Kessler. Uh, yeah. So, and I don't speak completely wrong on this, but we are under Marriott. So Kessler's under Marriott, and it's part of the autograph collection. So yeah, I mean, one day we'll get Ben on the show too. That'd be that'd be great. We don't yeah. tip. So usually we stick on the stick to the culinary side, but there's this whole other uh, component to food service and food and and the whole thing, and that you know. Like Act. front of house people? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They de- First of all, they deserve it. And when you- I'm kidding. <laughs> He's front of the house. That's why. I'm more front of He's house. He's a traitor. I am not. <laughs> I am the bridge. Remember, when you go from the back of the house to the front, you're a traitor for life. I always like to call people. He oh, never on. went to the back. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me, uh, he picked his food up and ate. <laughs> Wait a minute. They, so I started in the front. Okay. And right. then they, they were like, they tried to bring tried. me in. They tried. And I gave it an honest go, but I'm like, this is like a dungeon. I don't want to. It was punishment. <sighs> That's for, the best part. No, not for. I'm an extrovert. Oh. I need to be out. Yeah, you know. So for me, being in the back, here's here's your knife. Uh, here's the carrots, and have at it. I'm like, what am I punished? <laughs> like, this is like, a, you know, my father is like, yeah, get in the back and cut these carrots. Yeah, it's like know? PT duty. Yeah, forget <laughs> it. Peel those potatoes. Exactly. <laughs> I need fifty pounds of onion to peel now. Yeah. I was like, I need to be in the front. I want to be a star. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. So That's I, why he started the podcast. Yeah, there you true. Go. Yeah. true story. Actually, it was it was all for John. It's John's <laughs> photography. John would be great look in kitchen. Look at the look. <laughs> it's for the photography factor. We wouldn't be. Let me tell you something. I, I said this, I don't know, an hour ago. We wouldn't have the success that we do have had it not, had it not be for the food that you're creating, right? Thank you. The photography that you're showing off what this guy makes. Definitely. And then we come and talk about it. And then, of course, we drizzle or, you know, we lace in. Sprinkle. Sp- sprinkle in. Uh, I let the salt run down my foot. Oh, don't do that. No, don't. No, I don't. No. I don't, no. No, I don't. <laughs> Not salt, babe. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Get out of here. So, um, but the point is, um, without those components, I don't think we have the success that we have. Because mm. if not, then we're just talking heads. We're well, doing just well, just two different guys just talking about food, mm-hmm. and then bringing a third guy in or somebody yeah. else in to talk about it. I mean, I think what you guys are doing for the the industry or the community as a whole is really cool. You Thanks, know, the fact man. you're doing the proof in the pudding. I mean, you're you're showing what you do. You put it on different levels, and then you actually talk about what you just did. I mean, I just watched you produce that food. Come here and talk about it. So there's no BS in it. You know. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because you you only saw two dishes, and we started at ten. Yeah. So it's, we got on. And I'm sure you were prepping half the day yesterday. Like you're working towards it. (laughs) Full day. Full Full day. day. So, because I get phone calls. Whatever. Hey, man, we got business to attend. It's not all just about. Uh, no, it's not all poops and giggles. I know. It's, it's just like it's, it would just be like the uh, the sous chef who's very talented, but doesn't understand that there's a business to the to this whole thing. Do you know what I mean? That's what this is. You know what I mean? Oh, I know there's a business. Oh, yeah. There's a business. You know, or else we're. Uh, or else the we're business like, is uh, getting your belly bigger. <laughs> well, all right. Listen. You kind of hurt my feelings. How Not really. you even you even call me today? I haven't eaten. <laughs> I saved I'm it. Ready. I lost three pounds this week. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's that's three. huge. I'm going to get it back today. It's but all it's I, all protein anyway. You're good. You, yeah, you know what I mean. Well, yeah. it's never all good protein. <laughs> <laughs> it's never. It's never. And then we have like some desserts today coming up oh, too. Right, like yeah. oh my god, yeah, s'mores. Sort of an offshoot on s'mores. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I wish we can post the text string from John, me, and you. No, we should never post those things. <laughs> never, never do that. Never do that. They, we'll I'll show you posts. offline, Chef. Don't worry yeah, about that. When you'll be, you'll be part Put of that, that way. <laughs> but I will tell you this. So, um, Chef Jason, he's a culinarian. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he he's gotten to a level in his career where he, you know, he can look at things. So I respect, and I'm very happy. I'm thrilled, mm-hmm. actually, that you. You said what you just said, you know, because yeah. you're, you're a cat that number one, and you guys need to see 
the people listening in the audience, um, what's your, what's your, um, what's your bit, your best platform? Is it Instagram or yeah, probably this time Instagram? Yeah. What's your Chef, handle? Chef J Lynn, like the letter J L Y N N my last uh, name, like okay. the girl you, you need to, um, you need to see what he does because it's, it's you're getting a new follower right now. Right. Nice. Now I left. I'm up to like 310 right now. I'm blowing up. Well, you're blowing up like we knew you would. Yeah. You know, call the same number, same hood. It's all it's good. It's always these beautiful women wanting to be friends with me on Instagram. As, you know, like you're yeah, one of those Insta- your I Instagram. I don't think they're real. Infamous. Uh, <laughs> you know, infamous. They want to sell you crypto. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> they want to. Right. So, but anyway, listen, the, the, the culinary that this cat puts out is stunning. It's beautiful looking stuff. So, um, I do appreciate what you said. Thank you. So what's on the menu anyway? What a like grand bow, a grand bow. What's on the menu? Uh, you know, we have our Bohem restaurant, so that has, uh, you know, great reviews, uh, great ambiance with the new, uh, renovation. We went to all these, uh, amateurs. These how, new, how are we? Number one. Wait a minute. New. How the hell? Wait a second. Stop chef. Hold on. How on earth did we get to the number? Oh my God. Like amateurs rank amateurs. You know, we could have just said that was smoky and moved on, but no. you want to call it out, don't I you? I want to call, I want to, well, I'll you're talking you. about my, my, my fatty fatness, so I'm going <laughs> to bring that up. Yeah, what the F are we talking about here? Uh, what the Jason Athlon are we talking about here? All right. All right, back to the menu. Yeah. What are we looking at? What are we looking forward to? Have you have you gotten around to, to menus yet or no? No. I mean, we're working right now in our Altira Lounge, which is upstairs on the sixth floor, which is a really cool outdoor area, um, a primarily bar, but we also have a menu there with 10 items. That's the pool area, right? Yeah, that's, that's the pool area. pretty spot, too. Yeah, it's really, you need to get that kind of just whole kind of shot of downtown Orlando and, and the whole, you know. Are view. you are you allowed to tease what those uh, menu items might be or no? If, uh, if it's a no, I'm not going to put, I'm yeah, not going to press Well, it's it. kind of, you know, a lot of different players involved in actually making a menu. It's not always just say one individual, but right. uh, I mean, you know, we're doing a lot of, we're trying to get some Creekstone, you know, uh, beef brisket in there, doing a quesadilla. We're looking to uh, fold in, I'm going to say the word crab dip, you know, it doesn't always say, Hey, crab dip. Right. But we do get this beautiful, uh, you know, crab and fresh, you know, every Sunday brunch. So then we make crab dip for that as well. Um, so it's just really, uh, you know, giving with the people what they want. Now, speaking of give with the people they want, if, um, if you need me, I'm available mm-hmm. to help you <laughs> oh, figure comes. out the menu and right. stuff, you know, actually he's, he's holding back. He wants to be the official <laughs> taster. Yes. We are doing a tasting for that menu in about two weeks. So we right. could maybe well, I'm available. You. Okay. So, well, actually, you no, know you're what? Not. Two weeks? Probably not. No, you're not. So we're... we're I'm uh, going to already tell you that right now. Man, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we've got the World Food Championship um, in Dallas coming up. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I was really blessed and fortunate to be asked to be a, a master judge. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that. That's yeah. so cool. It is. I am so excited. See all this hard work? <laughs> this hard work. This, See, he just eats it, and then you can judge. Off. See, kids, if you want to achieve something, you can be a server and just eat food and then judge. This is what I, wow! All right, so all right, well, listen. I did ten years. Like it's almost like it's a prison cell. I did ten years. You judges in, in food service. Oh, okay, God. I did ten years. No, in I know, I'm just kidding. I, know, I believe you. I put my time. In, okay, I put in my time, and God knows my hands hurt too. Yeah. Like, like I didn't come away unscathed. All right. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Wow. Man, you guys are very hurtful. I gotta tell <laughs> no, you. no, no, not hurtful. <laughs> Truthful. <laughs> well, hashtag truth. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> what am I ordering when I, I really want to listen, I am excited about the grand bow. Grand bow. Here, here's the thing about the grand bow. When you're developing, like you're building this menu, you're about to do, and do the test runs and stuff. Mm-hmm. What are you looking for to do? Like for describe what the process is when you're with the audience. Yeah. You know, it's a huge combination of even like assessing the skill set of your team. You always have to keep that in mind. What can they actually obtain or what can they do? Uh, knowing your demographic, you know, when I opened up a breakfast and lunch place years ago, I didn't want to put French fries on the menu. So three days later I had French fries on the menu. Uh, so team demographics, you know, products, what's available, what can I do? Uh, I mean, everything from flatware to plates to, the flow of food, how it's coming off the line, how it's making its way into the dining room. I mean, there's a lot to really think about when writing a menu. I mean, hence why we're taught, even when designing a restaurant, menu is really the first thing that we should think about because the menu is dictates how many fryers you need in the kitchen, how many you know, eyes on the range. And 
So there's a lot to a lot and, of things. It which trickles into decorum and you know the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at when a chef so designs much. a restaurant from scratch. I mean, they're thinking about the colors in the dining room. I mean, I mean, it's insane that everything that you have to go through. So, but I call it fan favorites. I'm always I always say you have to give the fan favorites. You have to have the strip. You have to have the ribeye. You have to have the cuts of beef. You have to have, you know, the couple chicken dishes for our wives. You have to have, you know, the seafood dishes for all the seafood lovers, of course. So. Um, I agree. And I think that if you're listening, get there. Um, Jeffrey. Sir. All right. We got the Tomahawk experience. Big 50 ounce. You know, I know. I saw the picture in. of that. By the way, that was. That looks serious. Completely yeah. bone, like a... Uh, like Salt Bay style. I know we don't want to say that name. <laughs> Did, do you have like a... You should get a like a the logo, like put it on yeah. the like No, and we're actually looking at you know, getting cutting boards with the logo. Everybody's doing... You know, that kind of started more in the country club world years ago, branding <clears throat> everything. Yeah. Actually, I've got a guy, Chris Steveley, out of uh, Tennessee. I think he's out of... He does woodwork and okay. custom. Custom. Right. And he's got gorgeous stuff. There you go. And he's an ex-chef too. That's what I love about him. Better than sense. no offense, better than that B R O uh cutting board one. Gotcha. So he's, he's a small guy who he does great stuff with his his uh abilities with wood. Uh, bro, listen to me. So um let's talk food safety. Not not the normal food safety. <laughs> not normal food safety. Yeah, wash your hands, people. No, this is different, <laughs> Jeff. Or having a towel on your shoulder. Uh <laughs> yeah. show <laughs> um CDC estimates that 48 million people get sick, 128,000 are hospitalized, and 3,000 die from foodborne illnesses, diseases uh, each year in the U.S. What say you? I, I, you know, it starts, you know, we look at everything in the industry, and when Chef and I were talking in the green room, you know, we talk about food safety and when the health inspector comes in. It doesn't start there. The health inspection starts in the field. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things when I was growing up in the industry itself was always buy from a reputable, um, an account person, right? And the reason being is because it goes about traceability and accountability. When I worked for the large broadliner, they can tell you what field was picked, what time, and who actually picked it. And that's how far back the traceability goes back when you're with a reputable company, and that's how important it is. But people don't realize that are not in the industry for themselves is that there are more laws on the books for people in the restaurant industry than there are for doctors. Mm. And a lot of people question that. Like, why is that? Mm. Well, we can kill as many people in masses because we do something wrong, whether it be. And there's a big thing about I had food poisoning. Well, food poisoning is an actual chemical that has been inter in introduced to the food. So that's like bleach or mm -hmm. uh, ammonia. So that's food poisoning. Foodborne illness is actually caused by mm -hmm. salmonella, E. coli, Olistra. And we all know these names because look in our news. Like just recently we had 15,000 pounds of food that was dumped. We had 10,000 pounds, almost 10,500 pounds of food dumped from Diego Foods. And everybody's like, well, at least they caught it and they dumped it. The problem is... Mm. What about the natural resources and the energy and all the other stuff that it took to make that food and bring it to the market and let alone all that other stuff and how the FDA and the USDA work together, which they don't, and how they have to go about finding and, and holding these people accountable. And I think that's the biggest problem we have is when the consumers don't realize they have that much power. The chefs actually lead the consumers. We can give them what they want. I mean, look at the guy with the cronut. Everybody wanted a cronut for so many years. You could be, have the next person to be doing something. And why are we not on a bandwagon about food safety? I don't know. I mean, I, last year, uh, last January, we talked about it on one of the yeah, podcasts. I was at, I went to, a, I was in a hotel in Georgia uh, and really nice place, you know, really. Uh, Georgia it, Revenge instead of it, Montezuma's Revenge. A little bit, uh, <laughs> it was a little dated, but it was a really nice property. And um, we got there late. And long story short, when I walked in to the front desk, which was maybe, I don't know, 80 yards away, right? Uh, the dining room from the front desk, like, you know, you walk in, there's your check-in, and to the left is, you know, you can see the dining room. Um, there were fruit flies at the front desk. Yeah. And, I, and I knew, but I was like, man, uh, this is something, I, I noticed it. I'm in the, you know, I'm involved in this, right? So uh, we... Um, Went to the dining room, ordered. Yeah, there were fruit flies. And what are we going to say? I was, 
I thought I, first of all, I thought I had a heart attack because I woke up in the middle of the night, like maybe one in the morning and I ended up, uh, it was horrible. I ended up passing out. Like it was bad. I have a scar on my knee. I'll show you. <laughs> like it was horrible, horrible, horrible. Definitely a food one thing. Wow. And yeah. And what's the, the, what the most, the scariest part of it is, it's not somebody of your age. It's about the people that are younger. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a, there's a mother that lost her son to salmonella poisoning and they wanted to get this bill enacted. And unfortunately all the lobbyists that are in Washington are kind of like kind of shushing that bill so they don't have to do certain things. So if you look and compare what happened back in the nineties with, um, the, uh, tobacco industry Mm -hmm. it's happening now in the food industry yeah there are some corporations out there not all there are some corporations out there that are more for the profitability and they don't care about how many lives they you know destroy peanut farmer we were talking about the one that did all the processing for all those different foods he's in jail for 25 years because he knowingly poisoned humans yeah people that's gonna happen okay so there's a difference between um actively knowing yeah. that you've, you've, you've hurt people and mm-hmm. worse right? Uh, than, Hey, there's an accident that occurred. You know, obviously there's insurance for these things. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, let's make the fix and, and we have to just all move on. Um, there's differences between that. And, and I think the, I, typically the larger the corporation is the yeah. less, you know, mm-hmm. the less the, well, I should say the more that uh, profitability matters versus, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, I mean, you hope they don't cut corners as large as they are. Yeah. Right. You know, you hope that the smaller people don't, you know, the smaller operations don't cut corners Mm -hmm. either. And you never know because when you can't pay your mortgage, but you're trying to, you know, do your thing and Mm -hmm. do your business, people get put in precarious uh, positions and and sometimes they make the wrong choice, you know, but usually what happens, it it ends up getting, comes out in the wash and people... Mm -hmm. People get, uh, they go to jail, they get fined, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And I think they should do that with the truth in menu too, as far as the health inspectors are concerned. You know, we talked about being local and, you know, Chris Saracen or Keith Saracen wrote that farm to fable. You know, when we're talking about if you buy something locally and mm-hmm. you put it on your menu, mm-hmm. well, then I think the health inspector should have that right. Number one, the, tr- the accountability and the traceability for that product. But number two, if you put local and you're getting it from California, how yeah. local is that? No. So, Obviously, if you're not in California, <laughs> right? If you're here in Orlando, yeah. So that's that's to me that's mind boggling, boggling that we're doing stuff like that. I mean, like when you're developing and you're meeting uh, your vendors, do you ask them well, what kind of insurance do you carry? No, not normally. So when you so with uh, when you're talking about larger um, properties, you know, uh, people who are. Uh, part of Avendra or some other large program or Cisco or one of the big broadliners, mm-hmm. those, those vendors, you know, when you're talking about a multi-billion dollar, uh, distributor, they have their safety, um, checks are ridiculous. What they have to do in order to open a warehouse and, 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 you know, have, and do perform and do be in business. There's that famous acronym. Has up. Uh, HACCP is HACCP, HACCP is nothing compared to what these guys have to do. Well, they still have to do HACCP though. No, HACCP is like the basic of the basic. But then there's the, but then there's there's another four levels up, and each level you go, it's another you know if, depending on the size of your building, it's another hundred grand that you got to throw into your building, or five hundred grand you got to throw into your building, or a million dollars you got to throw into your building, in order to hit, hit to have the, the right facilities in order to reach mm-hmm. these plateaus. But you know again, they're multi billion dollar organizations. They you know, it's part of the, what about the farmers? It. How much insurance well, the farmers have to have? Yeah. How much the water, but, and but it trickles backwards too. Mm-hmm. So like if you're, if you're, once you hit a certain level in distributorship, um, you can no longer, when you're small, you can, you can find the guy with the small truck who's selling, uh, apples, right. And you buy the apples from him cheap. It's good. You know, whatever you can eyeball it. See, it's, it's good. Right. You get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. All of a sudden, you can't buy from that guy anymore because mm-hmm. you have to buy from a farm that shows their traceability, and they have to have all their protocols in place and everything. So you're 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 forced in a good way, and it's not a bad force. It's mm-hmm. a good you're forced into um, dealing with 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 um, higher level farms who do the right work, 
and all of it is traceability and all of it is insurance and everything is, you know, mm-hmm. you, there's some safety measures there because at the end, it, it, when it, what ends up happening is guest X gets sick. What do they do? The, their attorneys are going to go all the way back as far as they can. And so if I'm the distributor and all I did was br- I brought product in that, you know, you do spot checks, you can only spot check so much, mm-hmm. Right. So what ends up happening is if something happens, if a load comes in mm-hmm. and somewhere on that pallet is something that gets somebody sick, that's horrible. But you defer to your farm who has their protocols and insurance takes us out of the loop, out, right? yeah. out of the loop of it. And it goes, you know, so it, it there's like checkpoints down. Yeah. I think know? one of the, also the other problem or the other facet that about food safety is years ago when Jack in the Box had the E. coli outbreak. <laughs> And then it was beef. And then mm-hmm. they kind of rectified it. For the most part, they've rectified it. Um, then we started seeing it in the produce. Like, you know, mm-hmm. a great example, we talked about Chipotle. Um, company that bounced back because they had accountability and traceability. They knew exactly where it was coming from. It was One was romaine, one was scallions and something else. I can't remember the last one. But here's the thing that's so different. You can take a piece of meat that might be tainted with E. coli and cook it to a certain temperature. Scallions. Yeah. And it was scallions. I said scallions and uh, romaine. For yeah. them. There was another one. I think it might have been tomatoes. But you're not cooking the lettuce. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, uh, some of these programs I was watching, um, Food Inc. and Food Chains. So Food Inc. is one that was really dealing with food safety. And one of the things, they had brought this lawyer who actually started with Jack in the Box and went after them and found the emails and so on and so forth. And they brought him into a, a grocery store and they walked around and he goes, well, what wouldn't you eat? He goes, anything in this place right now. <laughs> and he's like, well, why? He goes, because you can't chemically kill the E. coli, the salmonella, the Lystra, yeah. because you're washing, even pre-wash doesn't yeah. do anything. And I was like, the light bulb went off in my head and I'm like, oh my God, how right is he? And then they show you in this movie where not everybody's doing this. There are some companies that are actually growing <laughs> greens like it's in salad greens next to a feedlot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about you, but what is where does a feedlot get? Where what, when the animals go to the bathroom, they're not going into a border toilet; they're going right there on the ground. So that yeah. rainwater is going off, it's runoff. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that you just sit there and go, "Well, that's kind of stupid. Why are they doing that?" Like that's the question we need to be asking as consumers: Why is this happening? Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think that you know we have a uh, a thread in this program and it has to do with, uh, you know, farmers, you know, your local farmers and, and your chefs, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the restaurants, the hotels, the chefs from a community that are, you know, usually within uh, an hour from, from farms yeah, and how everyone should kind of know your farmers. And if you know, if there's a, if there's a push to know who your farmers are, then there's going to be a push for your chefs to know who their local farmers are to support them, but the more eyeballs there are on this, it's going to raise the bar higher. And, and, you know, ultimately what ends up happening is you're going to get a cleaner, safer, better yeah. product all the way around. Because if it's coming out of the ground and, and taken care of properly and all the protocols are, are met and whatnot, when that product makes it into the kitchen yeah. to be prepared for you to eat, well, guess what? Your experience is going to be that much better. Well, think about it. We, we talked about it on Patrick's uh, podcast when he came in. We talked about the green and gassing the tomatoes. Yep, yep. If they're local, guess yep. what? You're going to get a really full flavored, incredible tomato. Yeah, you know, it shows how much I know because recently touring a produce plant, I didn't realize how green they were when they came in, right? So, and then they're showing me how they gas them. And that really kind of blew my mind. I did not comprehend that that's how that works. I absolutely can't stand gas tomatoes. I didn't. I mean, I feel like it's the mean when you get the McDonald's tomato, it's like white in the center. And it's got yep. the green root in yeah, it. That's what it reminds gas. me that's, of. That's gas. We call yeah. them pinkies. Yeah. Like pink. They're pink colored pinkies. And, you know, we do all these great things to speed the process up to get the products there so there's no dents and you know, spoilages and so on and so forth. But yet in the world, the United States, as first world nation that we are, we're number nine in food safety. Yeah. And that's not just in restaurants. That's actual. How I, I bet you we're number one in fines. <laughs> what do you want to bet? <laughs> what, health department fines. Yeah, what do you want to bet? <laughs> but hey, as we talk on this topic, what it does remind me of, and this is just my take on it, and there's no statistical information I can give you. It's just a vibe. Lies. A vibe <laughs> that I've told people this for years. It's my BS vibe, whatever. I believe in the 70s and you know, even the 60s, it was this whole, the housewife doesn't have time anymore processing foods. They invented the little tables, right, for the microwave. Oh, my meal. God. 
And then hungry I think, man, Swanson's yeah, hungry Swanson. man. <laughs> but I think there was a lot of cloud around our food then, and what was going on with our food, and then more processing in eighties and nineties, and now with technology and, and internet and interwebs and all that, there's accountability. I think you're right, but I have to tell you, I, I grew think we're up getting aware of it as, as the as the older folks in my family watch it. Oh, your family, sorry. <laughs> yeah, in my fa- the older folks sitting across from me right now, Jeffrey's <laughs> little. Uh, no, as my, as the as the older generations in my family started to kind of pass on, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously you lose a lot of the traditions, uh, traditions yeah. and whatnot, and the freshness and the cooking, yeah. whatever. But I was fortunate to get a lot of that. Like everything was always fresh and made it from scratch. That's good, yeah. And, but there was a point towards the you know late eighties, early nineties when it was like um, Swedish meatballs, you know, oh, IKEA. The, yeah, it starts no, turning. IKEA. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about from like the grocery store. Forget the brand. Might have been Swanson's. I don't know, but it was like Swedish meatballs. And they were like, I still would eat the hell out of that. Like, right. hundred percent. Oh yeah. They're good. But they're probably, it's probably, <laughs> it, 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 if my, you know what would probably happen if I, if my carcass was just there, it would, it would, it would not, be preserved. Yes. It wouldn't decompose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it, it's honest to God. I've, I was reading a report not too long ago that we're, our corpses are not deteriorating so fast and it's because of preservatives. Because of preservatives. Wow. Microplastics, right? All that good stuff. Well, not just the microplastics. It's, 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 you got to look at. You Sorry, know, stop it. I was I was reading a box of uh, like a, a Betty Crocker, and you know, my wife's like, "Well, there's not that many chemicals in there." And I'm like, "Really? Triglycerides and monoglycerides. And I'm like, "Every single other word." When well, we say that now, chemical. not so. There's not as many. Many, right? Yeah. I think you know, back in the in the fifties when they developed Wonder Bread, that's where it really started to go downhill. Yeah, it, exactly. When that's what I'm saying. Production. High fructose corn syrup instead of sugar. You know. Well, and again, you've got to look at the supermarket. Look when you look at the cereal aisle in itself. I know we're going to talk about the TikToker that you mentioned last time, and he's going to come on. There's like four major food groups mm-hmm. or, or companies. You look at beef right now, for instance. Tyson doesn't want to do chicken anymore. They're moving out of chicken and going more beef. You have IBP, Swift, Smithfield for pork. Um, am I missing anyone? Because I can't think of anyone. Well, those are the big. Those are yeah. the big daddies. That's what I'm talking about. So what's yeah. what's happening? Look, this is a point. Uh, just happened. Cisco. What did they just buy recently? Like as in the last two days. Edward Don, right? Thank you. That's, yeah. So now I'm like, I'll shut up. <laughs> I was gonna but say. that's the thing. Like when I worked for the major broadliner I worked with, I remember when they I remember to this day, December thirteenth, they made the announcement Cisco was gonna acquire US Foods. Yeah. It's the movie Wally, right? You remember it was like the big brand like Walmart takes buys everything. That's what we're eventually gonna turn into. And no, we're not it's flying around. We space. are turning into that. And that's the problem. We're not getting into this where we have these little niches of beautiful products and you know, the food safety becomes a concern too. Yeah. What was the movie that w- had Costco in it? And um, it was a uh, oh the alien movie. No, 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 no. no. It was ben the, Stiller. They were they had a they had a um, Gatorade. Oh god, it Gatorade. Was a, Costco. It was a comedy. Yeah, okay. Jennifer Aniston was in there. Oh, the new that? guy, the new employee. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What's that called? Uh, employee of the month. No yeah. man. It was. Yeah, I think it was employee of the month. Of the month. No, <laughs> but that's what he was going for. It was for. a Costco. Uh, you yeah, know, what I'm so about. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? No, not Ryan Reynolds. The wannabe Ryan Reynolds. Or is Reynolds. it um, Dan? Cook. You got it. Dane Cook. Dane Cook. Yeah, it was Dane Cook. Jennifer Aniston. I thought might yep. have been in it. Had Andy you, Dick. No, you're in talking it. about you're talking about like the restaurant movie. Oh, you, no, 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 no. That's that's called. Sh- um, you said Costco. Waiting. Waiting. Yeah. Waiting oh, is the no. one. That's the other one. No, this is like. Uh, uh, I can't. It's right here, and I can't. I can't uh, think of what it is. Like, but it was, it was like a point of the month. Ga- Gatorade, um, <laughs> you know, plants wanted or something like that. Oh, electrolytes. Oh, uh, uh, idiocracy. idiocracy. Greatest oh, movie God. of all time. Jesus. I, I didn't. Oh, thank you. I love it. Please. Different one. Different one. Uh, I just want everybody who's listening right now. I want to thank Chef Jason for because, idiocracy uh, because I would have been sitting here. Th- Stumbling you, in my mind trying to but figure you out. You said Costco. You led with Costco. There was a Costco because, in it. There, they were looking for okay. the time machine. Remember, he was trying to go back in time. Everything was bought at Costco. Everything was bought at Costco. Everything. Right? Cars, everything. Right. But electrolyte, it was like a failing civilization <laughs> because they put it on the plants. Yeah. Because they were putting electrolytes on the plants because that's what plants crave. And and at the end of the day, it was yeah. killing everything. And yeah. it was just. Um, anyway, but that's really, how bad they got. And Luke Wilson's character was like, put water on the plants. And they're like, water from the toilet. Water. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We're, li- we're living that life right now. It's scary. We're there. Sure. This is like people go watch that movie. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, go watch it. Yes. Idiocracy. <laughs> and that and that's that's what's crazy to me that we have big farming, but when we think when we're driving down, we see these huge farms. How, how? what kind? Huge. 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 Okay. How, how many 
bins do you have out back in your house, John? Two, right? And you grow plants. I mean, obviously food, right? There's not much room you need to do. He's silent. Bob. Silent John over here. <laughs> He's shaking his head. The nods. The nods. We got to get him an overcoat. To <laughs> put that in the hat backwards. backwards. Yeah. But that's the thing that people think, and they think, oh, I need masses of amounts of land to do it. And unless you're doing like a Napa cabbage, uh, like Amy Yee's family does, which you need one seed plants for one. By the way, when you plant a seed, doesn't mean that's going to generate food, correct? Uh-huh. <laughs> so you have to build, you know, do as many as you think you're going to do so that hopefully you get product. We are, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. It is 1.38 uh, p.m. on a Thursday. We are 997,528 downloads from wow. October of 2022 to October of 2023. I think we're going to be hitting a million this month. Oh, Probably by tomorrow. Nice. Wait, we were ninety nine thousand one hundred this morning when we talked. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's nice. Super. Congratulations. Hasn't happened, but like it's right <sighs> there, man. I thought it was hoping. I was so, so hoping we'd hit a million for the show. For this, yeah, to make the announcement. Yeah, well, I mean, but right what, what's there. the other announcement? Oh, we were number one again. We hit number one oh, again. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, all of you, everybody. You, yes. you downloading. You monster downloading <laughs> sons of bitches. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Seriously, this is this is the coolest thing ever. Because normally, the people who are in the top ten on these things, even twenty, fifty, hundred, they're all like brand name people. You right. know, like they're they're the NPR folks and the New York Times this and you know the ten you know best selling cookbooks that and like all these like big name people. And then there's like us. Yeah. You know? But you guys are legit, though. The three of you make this happen, you know? It's the, this is one of the coolest things. So, like, remember, okay, remember, like, uh, Casey, Casey. Oh, my right. God. <laughs> right? But it's the billboard, like, your top, right? Yeah. Okay, now, obviously, this isn't the same as, you know, being in the number one song in the country because those people are making millions of bucks. And then, you know, <laughs> then there's us, right? But, at, but, the, but, but the truth is, <clears throat> in this particular field, you hit number one in your category. That's that's really like a, a big yeah. freaking deal. What, what do we mean, art? We're, so, oh, wait, let me let me. Yeah, touch this on is that. this is really cool. What this he's is, about to say. Yeah. So let me touch on that. Um, our main category. When John told me the way he wants to film. He didn't say anything. All right. So he just <laughs> he's fine. The he our, for prosperity's sake. Yes. Our main category is the arts. Okay. We're actually uh, today number fourteen. In the arts category. I am an artist. We are artists. Right. Okay. Right. Food. Food. Hashtag real. Is a subcategory of the arts category. Who's number one in arts? Uh, Paul McCartney. You know that guy? Sir. Who? Sir yes. Paul. The guy from back then? Right. Sir, Great okay, guy. So not fun. knocking Paul. Sir no, no, Paul. Dude, Sir Paul McCartney. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Just um, to put this into perspective. Um, the Walk and Talk podcast is in the same breath okay, <laughs> as, as Paul McCartney. Are you, out of your, are you crazy? Yeah. I, I can't wrap my brain around this. Neither do I. I can't. C- Carl's wearing a t-shirt right now, by the way. I am wearing like, a, I don't know what that means. Well, but, Paul was always dressed up at least, right? <laughs> well, he's Sir, sir Paul. Paul. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, think he'd have to attain, I have Carl to, would have to attain Sir. I'm wearing a dish rag over here, literally, right? So, but 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 it's the truth. How cool yeah, is that? That's amazing, right? So, listen, we're not in some kind of like crazy status where we're number one or top, you know, even two hundred and and like the, the the main like, hey, who's the number one podcast? Like we're nowhere, we're nothing to them. But in our categories, man, we're we're really kicking some butt. Yeah, you know, and and really thank you everybody for being part of this in whatever capacity that you are. Thank you kindly. Like sincerely. I mean, it is a true testament to what, you know, how it goes and all the different text messages and emails and, mm-hmm. you know, the messaging, Hey, what's going to be on the topic? What are you doing this week? And, yeah. and then you hear about, for some reason, I got more blow up last week. I mean, and, and maybe we'll do it with you chef, but with Jay on, I got, this was the best one. And I, really? my response, yeah. My response was why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. And they were like, just the chemistry between you guys, the topic you guys chose to talk about was so spot on. You guys bring it to light. Um, you, you had humor to it. And I'm like, well, we'll try to replicate that. <laughs> and that, that's, that's, you know, great feedback. Thank you so much, mom. No kidding. 
<laughs> I mean, do you get ideas from your listeners? Have they given you? Any? Yeah, I mean, we would love to, but there's so we love we're, a little more interaction. We're, we're in the process. So the the thing about social media, and this is the funky thing about it, and I and I and I can apply this to myself because I am a huge consumer of social media, right? By by the nature of this, even I'm, I'm just a huge. So I have historically watched, listened, read, and never liked commented, shared, mm -hmm. followed, none of that. That's never been in my, you know, repertoire of things to do. Never part of my process. The vast majority, like our YouTube channel, right? Where we're doing restaurant recipes and the dirty dash. And, you know, we have these all culinary badass shows that we put out that are getting 5,000, 30, 50,000 uh, views at a time. We don't have a lot of interaction, which really pisses me off because I don't understand it. I do though, because that was me. Now I just, I, you know, if I, if I get caught reading or if I get caught into a video or I'm, I'm listening to, a, I find myself listening to a podcast, I will go out of my way, even if I don't particularly care for the host or what they're saying. But if it, if it grabbed me in a way where I, I felt compelled to listen, mm -hmm. I still give them something because now I know what it's like, you know, to, to do the work, like look at all the, like there's so much work that goes involved that get that's involved in, in doing this and money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time. <laughs> so hold on, man. Cause now don't you dare because the reality is you see all this, all this stuff. This has been a three and a half year. I got you. Yeah. That's, that's this not is, why we're laughing. Hey, I remember you posting <laughs> photos of these microphones. You were proud of them, right? Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember that. that. Was like, yeah. Yeah. I've watched your process. You yeah. Know, you guys have no, you've, been, you've been following from, from yeah. the rip. I've been that creeper. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> 100%. When we went to, well, I opened the door. You guys didn't know this. I opened the door up because, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. It's still strange to me. I drive by your house. <laughs> <There> was, <laughs> he's been here before. I know where I was. I know where I was going. No, when, when, uh, we, we met at a, a property a while ago, a different property. And um, uh, I met him like after meeting, you know, the exec and another high. Uh, anyway, when he came over, he was like, oh, hey, man. Yeah, I, I, I follow. I listen. I watch this. I was like, OK, because I did. I feel like I was like, I feel like he knows what my room looks like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but no, I'm kidding. Sort of. No. Anyway, no. Um, but, yeah, but here we are. And it's a testament to what we're doing that this cat who is high end, yeah. you know, that we're able to work together. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, but back to what I was saying earlier about what you're doing for the industry, you know, like bringing the idea of Michelin and like, you know, ACF chefs together. Because mm -hmm. there is a line sometimes between Beard. kind of that. Don't, don't forget about James Beard. You know, you got, got a like hip, of them coming on. hipster sure. chefs, I always say, with the big gauges in their ears. And you, know, you got the hipster chef generation. You got like the kind of the mom, like the middle aged chef generation, I'll say. And you got the older generation. And I think it's just kind of blurring those lines and bringing everybody together. You know, it's funny that you brought that up because that's exactly where I want to be. I do want to take, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the old school yeah. and the new school yeah. and, you know, us Gen Xers who are kind of now in that middle, yeah. middle stage, actually even getting up there now. But I want to, I want to like smash yeah. everybody together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the, the reality is yeah. if you work in a line, whether it's uh whether it's a, a banquet you know, whether you're, whether you're doing, you know, giant banquets at a hotel or, or you're, you know, you've got 300 covers yep. at a restaurant, yep. dude, we're all, it's all the same work. Yep. It, it's all, and it's, and it's, you're feeding guests yep. and guests get honorary. You know, yep. it's not easy to feed safely, people. Safely feeding guests. Yeah. Safely feeding guests. Yes, safely, of course. Um, and it's hard to feed people because yeah. I love people. <laughs> I, people are awesome, but in another breath, people suck. It's like, you know, which, which one is which, yeah. you know what I mean? Because listen, when you, when you're sick, you're an a-hole. When you're hungry, you're an a-hole. Happens to all, myself included. It happens to everybody, right? So what do you do? We in the service industry have to deal with the hungry people. Yeah. I, uh, I worked for five years uh, while I was still in restaurants. I worked five years in, in, a, in a hospital and I was doing um, ER registration and I was also a sleep study technician, strangely. Okay. And when I was doing ER registration, dude, let me tell you something. Hurt people and people who are under duress yeah. are 30, 50 times worse yeah. than somebody who's hungry and, and, and got the wrong temperature, uh, you know, uh, yeah. steak. So have when, you met my family? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when, when, you, when you look at those two groups of individuals, it's hard to please them. Yeah. Right. So our segment in food, really difficult. 
will we make it happen? I think any time. And we keep coming it. back for more. <clears throat> my my, my favorite, and I would always ask when I would get a new job, and I would be like, uh, you guys open Thanksgiving? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, I'll take the job. Thanksgiving <laughs> and, they, and Christmas, to me, worst time in the industry to be oh my as God. a chef because you get all those, my stuffing's better. <laughs> well, then stay home and make it yourself. I know. But, you know, you make so much money, though. Is it like front of the house? <laughs> yeah, that's great, but not for the back of the house. How many, how many years? How many? Uh, John, I got, all of us here. Yeah. I mean, I had, I don't know, 10 years I didn't, or more really, yeah. that um, I worked every holiday. Yeah. You know, family's like, oh, when are you going to, what, what time are you getting out? I'm like, I, I don't know when I'm getting out. I'll, yeah. you know, I'll try to get there as soon as I can. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What? what do you mean? What do I mean? You know what I do? Like the place doesn't close until, you know, yeah. one o'clock in the morning. I worked at shenanigans. I worked from five yeah, o'clock in the afternoon to crazy. five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thursday, Friday. No, it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah, but that, Saturday. That place. No, that was in waiting. The movie waiting. Right there. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bennigan's. That, that, Bennigan's. Oh, you, oh, I thought it was shenanigans. <clears throat> well, no, the place was called There's shenanigans. No, time out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Bennigan's was what... You know, that was, was depicted of. Yes. Oh, okay. In the yeah, movie. Yeah. Shenanigans. shenanigans was actually the name of the Pat Utter's restaurant called Shenanigans. Oh, okay. Sports bar. That place was debaucherous. Was it? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What happened there stayed there. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, like we, I, so I, I, I had a little stint at Bennigan's. Um, <laughs> and, and I got to tell you, that was a wild, wild place. But Monte uh, Cristo. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. So... <laughs> What when you would leave Bennigan's You'd at twelve thirty, we would go to Shenanigans, Shenanigans, and that's where things started to get illicit. <laughs> it was really bad. And then after Shenanigans, what about Flanagan's? You head over no, <laughs> no, different down you, south. you went over to yeah, Capone flicker like Capone over in Hollywood, <laughs> and that's where it really got crazy. That's where people would get killed in the front. Like that was like <laughs> nuts. I remember the first time it was nine, maybe nineteen ninety. Um, we started going to, to Capone's? Capone's and I remember we got there, it was like late or whatever, you know, whatever time in the morning it was. And there was some dude. He, we used to go to Lester's too. Yeah. But Lester's, you didn't, uh, you didn't, you didn't get like stabbed. No, you know, no, no, you didn't get stabbed. You got breakfast. Right. <laughs> this was after. <laughs> it's after seven you, in the morning. <laughs> yeah. After you're, you're cleaning your face from the fights. But I remember there was this cat. He was, um, there was a big dude and a little dude and the little dude was like on his hands and knees in the parking lot. Big buddy had these big boots. He was, this guy was just nailing this cat in the face over and over. And I'm just like, oh man, I want to go in here. <laughs> like, this is like, <laughs> I'm like, I found my home. Yeah. So that was where you go after shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans was, yeah. But I'm then sorry, you end people. up at Waffle House eventually, right? Or Dennis. for another fight. <laughs> well, less, well, it depends what kind of person you were. If you were, if you had any sort of like structure, and you, know, you would end up at Lester's. At Lester's, gotcha. Yeah. 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 And waffle, Especially Lester's. If you're end, ending up at any of those at Denny's or Waffle, you're looking for like no, no Waffle trouble. House. Yeah, you're looking for problems. It's different trouble, man. Yeah, no, hundred percent different. Yeah, because that part of Hollywood was rough back then. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it probably still is. I, I don't think so. About no. yeah, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, so I want to make an announcement here um, uh, as we uh, as we wrap up. <clears throat> so um, this is for Big Pooch Rivera. You know, we've been talking about this cat now for about a m- two months. Don't we say his name every single podcast? Almost? I, yes, but there's a reason. I love the guy. He's coming on board with us. We're going to give him a podcast. His podcast is going to be now. Now get this. Old time New Orleans food podcast. He's going to get into the um, history of the food culture in New Orleans. Nice. Italian, French, African American, that whole backstories and all that stuff. Stay tuned. Check it out. The chef, Jason F. Lynn, thank you for being on the program. Starship over there. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Silent John. <laughs> Silent man. John. Today I was, like Silent John the best, I think. I think I do, too. I think you, we're going to get him a shirt and everything, the hats. We're going to sell them. It's going to be like, we're going to make a million bucks. We are, and bless everybody, we God bless. are out. Out. Out.